everybody, Anna Sabramowitz here, your interactive storytelling coach. How are you today? Listen, today we're going to talk about um, what it means to be um, an interactive storyteller. Uh, also, um, where interactive stories actually fit in the learning ecosystem. We're going to talk about that a little bit because I think that from some of the questions that I've been getting is um, there's this belief that interactive stories replace content and they do not. They actually have a place that's separate from content and that will really help you figure out if an interactive story is a good fit for what you need. And also one of the things I'll be talking about is some of the characteristics that you'll need to become a really good interactive storyteller. So if that sounds really interesting or piques your attention, then stick around friends. I'm gonna be here for a little while talking about this and you'd better say hi in the chat. I love seeing who's visiting. All right, so um, yeah, say hello. And also uh, the other thing is, if you have questions uh, as these things come up, there is a little bit of a delay uh, when I see your questions, when you put, when I post things uh, that actually happens, which is, you know, whatever, this is the reality of our tech right now. But what I'd love for you to do is just, uh, let me know what your questions are in the chat. And then what I'll be able to do is if I don't answer it during the live, I don't see it. I will address it in the next live or I will answer it right there and then. Okay. So you better say hello. All right. So first off, thanks for joining me, by the way, I know you could be in a million other online places right now and you're here hanging out with me learning about interactive stories. I love that and uh, I'm gonna make it worth your time. I'm gonna over deliver today, okay? Of course. So one of the things we know when people are uh, getting into, you know, when people are working at, let's say, I'm talking most of the times when I talk about users or humans or audiences, I'm talking about professional adults, adults. And so people who we design learning for that are trying to perform something in a better way, right? They're either, uh, we do a lot of compliance courses. So people follow protocols. We do safety courses. So people follow safety protocols. We do all kinds of different uh, kinds of courses to help people sell better, be better leaders, negotiate better, do their job more efficiently, all kinds of things like that, right? Emotional intelligence, sexual harassment, all is all there, all of it. Now, one of the things that I found is if an organization is pretty established, then they've got what we call the five moments of learning need covered, right? And if you want to learn more about that, uh, then actually I'll put a link underneath the video for you guys to, to, uh, to look up the topic, Google it, right? Which is called the five moments of learning need, which really is, um, it's uh, by Bob Mosher and Conrad Godfredson. But basically what they talked about is that when you're, uh, moving through the stages of from being a new employee all the way to being someplace for like five years, the kind of information that you're going to need at those different stages, five moments of need, is going to change based on your comfort level, experience level, competence, the context of when you're accessing the information. And so what happens is basically there's an entire ecosystem of uh, resources available to you depending on where you are in time, basically, right? And uh, those things entail things like, you know, if you're right on the job, you don't need, uh, if you're executing or helping somebody in the, in the moment, the idea is that you're not going to go back to an e-learning module, right? To check the reference, you're actually going to go to a performance support job aid or uh, some sort of a quick reference guide. You're not going to watch like a, a video about it right in front of the customer. It's not realistic, right? So basically the idea is that the information changes depending on where you're at in that learning journey, right? So, hi Damien. <laughs> so, the learning journey for me, and we talked about this yesterday a little bit too, is that people go from, do I have it here? No, I have it right here, yes. So people go from cold to hot, right? Uh, cold unaware, right? And hot meaning they're enabled, they're aware of their gaps and they're really excited about filling them because they see where that future is gonna take them. Now, the thing that's kind of interesting I think is, yes, I said that this model really is based on that model that came about 50 years ago, which said that people are, fall on a spectrum, all humans in the world fall on a spectrum, depending in relationship to a, to a skill or a task, right? They're at the cold end of the spectrum, they're unconsciously unaware, which is they don't know what they don't know, because they don't know. 
And over here, yeah, we're basically this, we're trying to move them to uh, consciously um, competent, right? Or sorry, unconsciously incompetent. And we're moving them to unconsciously competent, which is where they're doing things automatically. But to me, that's almost like moving back into the cold zone because then you still don't know what you don't know because you've got things very much automatic and maybe it's time for you to move to the next level, right? So we talked about the fact that a lot of our learners are actually right here and that's why the interactive story is so important. So what I wanted to do is put this in the context of the actual, um, for you, the actual of the ecosystem and where an interactive story is actually very useful and where it doesn't fall in. Because one of the things that happens is when people craft their own interactive stories, they think that they have to jam in a whole bunch of content into the interactive story and they miss the point. The interactive story is not there to be a content uh, dump uh, or a content wrapped in story. That's not what an interactive story is. If you want to use storytelling in your content, go for it. But an interactive story is not meant to do that. So an interactive story, let me just, yes, I'm going to find this for you. I have so many diagrams now, I'm going to have to pull them out separately. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So if you want to use stories in your training, in your learning, go for it. That's great. People, that's how, that's how we learn, has, that's how we scaffold information. It's absolutely awesome. I love that. That's great. But when you're using that story in your content or your, you guys can read this context, you're thinking over here, right? You're thinking when somebody's already kind of moved from this cold unawareness up into the learning ecosystem, right? We're trying to get them hot and enabled and excited about the journey uh, that they're going to invest their time in that's fine but if you start dumping content here when they're not even aware that they need this at all you're wasting that opportunity and you're setting yourself up for failure and they won't look at any future stuff because you're overwhelming them remember here we got to be gentle we really do gentle when i say gentle i mean that we're not pointing any fingers like you have a gap the the idea behind the interactive story is that and the, why we say, listen, you can't have a decision without consequences. You can't have, um, uh, you can't have a character that has no transformation because the idea behind the interactive story is that our user justifies the rest of this in their own head. We're not being, um, we are using persuasion strategies in our story. We are using uh, language that shapes what they're thinking, of course, but it's not explicit. So we don't dump content on them because they're not learning anything yet. Right now what they're doing is they're just trying to figure out if they need this. And that has to come from the inside. When they sell themselves on that journey, when the belief that they're capable of doing something comes from the inside, this can actually not be as awesome as it needs to be because they've already sold themselves. They'll jump into the next thing, right? So a lot of people say, okay, I'm going to do storytelling throughout this whole thing. You don't have to. And in fact, if I was, uh, you know, if I was uh, thinking about um, uh, a manual that I needed for, uh, to, to actually help a customer, I don't want you to tell me a story. <laughs> I want you to tell me, I want you to give me the, the directions and the ideas that I need to be able to execute on my job well. So that's why I think the five moments of learning need is a good thing to consider here is because all of these, all of this, this entire journey from somebody to uh, cold unawareness to uh, that unconscious competence, it's it's a it's a plan, it's a journey, right? And all you're doing with the interactive story is you're the, it's the catalyst to get them started, and it's just getting them started, and it might not even be just this one thing. You might have an interactive story, but you might you might also have a couple of people who are sharing their stories who have already gone through the journey and this person aspires to be like one of them and they share their story about how they used to be over here, but now they're over here. So all those things are very important, but they don't work by themselves. It's an organized effort, right? So if you're thinking about, you know, is an interactive story good fit for my, for my project, for my organization? Is, is this going to help me? Right? I don't want to just, one of the worst things you want to do is just be like, yeah, interactive stories are awesome. Let's just put them on. And then, you don't really get the value out of them because you know you want to create things that add value and help people move towards 
a reality that you know that helps them live better lives so um yeah so you you have to think about okay does my organization already have a bunch of learning is it being accessed by people are they leveraging it to their full potential are people still making mistakes even though they have all these resources hmm maybe it's a beliefs thing maybe it's it's not a they don't get it they don't know they're lazy maybe it's they don't even know that it's there they don't even know that there's a better way they don't believe that they can do it themselves maybe it's beliefs holding them back maybe they don't even know maybe they've gone to and this happens quite a bit with people who are seasoned and experienced and we kind of neglect them I think a lot they've become so automatic in their actions that they don't even know that there's a better way of doing things and so you have to re-engage them emotionally in that journey again because you know to step outside of your comfort zone and learn new things and be kind of a novice again is a lot of emotional investment. It's personal investment, right? So you got to sell them on that. That's what the interactive story does is it sells them on it. So hold on, let me just refresh this. Hey, all right, cool. Hey, Luke. <laughs> Luke's saying, I saw a TV advert in that cool comic book style, which I'm going to try as an interactive story. Okay, cool. <laughs> now, the thing that I want you to consider, and it's kind of interesting because I get messages and I talk to people all the time, right? And uh, one of the things I get to also look at is people's amazing portfolios. And the thing is, and, and this is kind of weird, and I, I don't know if you can resonate with this, but sometimes I'll find people who have like the best portfolio pieces. When I talk to them, they're the most dissatisfied with themselves. Like, uh, they're like, yeah, I could do better. And, and what I realized, and this is kind of crazy, is that if you're, if you're thinking, if you come into this conversation about interactive stories and you think, you know, I'm amazing, I'm a rock star, right? Then I can't help you because you already think you're you're kind of like at the un unconscious competence, right? Where you're like, I already know what I'm doing. This is awesome, and there's no dissatisfaction. You can't actually see that there's another level there, right? So it's kind of weird because I find that the people who have the best portfolios usually are the most disparaging about their own skill set because the thing is. Um, when I when you look at people's work, listen, you guys could be putting together paint by numbers, right? And somebody out there, especially your mom, will be like, oh, that's amazing. Oh, wow, look at you, you're a painter. And you're like, no, I just did, you know, paint by numbers. So that dissatisfaction, it it's not it's not gonna come from the outside world. Listen, you guys, I see crap being put out all the time and everybody's going, amazing what did you do what tool did you use this is quite what tool did you use like that makes a difference really everybody's giving you applause the only way you're gonna feel like you need to move forward is it's got to come from the inside right it's like that journey um that of self you know self-growth has to come from your personal dissatisfaction with where you're at and listen i talk to a ton of people who are like i put together the best interactive slides ever and they're the best and my customers love them and everybody loves clicking them it's fun and and i'm like okay that's cool i'm not gonna get mad at that person for not seeing the potential you know when they look at broken coworker, they think it's not possible or that's a huge production value even those two people and a flip cam right um but that has to come from the inside that has to be something that like when people wanna get skilled at something, when people wanna engage in something that puts them outside of their comfort zone, because guess what? Interactive stories, they're not mainstream and they're not taught in your master's instructional design uh, places. I know this because I've talked to people who, who have those masters. We don't talk about interactive stories in there. Just because something's mentioned, it doesn't mean you actually learn how to do real storytelling to change people's behavior, right? So that means, that people who are like, oh man, I got this figured out. I've got this, you know, learning experience design. I've got this instructional design figured out. All of a sudden they're new at this again. For some people, that's a big jump. Some people aren't ready for that. For some people, they're like, I've been waiting for this. I've been waiting for the next challenge. Now, if that sounds like you, then we definitely got to talk. But if it sounds like you're the person who's like, you know, I'm a rock star, I'm good. Then you fall in here 
and our conversation ain't gonna help you. <laughs> so it's not gonna be a, um, it's not gonna be fruitful, right? If you're already here, like you're not, you know, you think you're already kicking butt, that's cool, that's good, you do your own thing. But if you are awesome at, at what you do, but also at the same time wanna push yourself to the next level, then this might be the next thing. This might be the next thing that levels up because as far as I'm concerned, instructional design, and we'll teach you, you know, the ecosystem there. Instructional design will get you 99% of that stuff, right? How to set up a mentor, how to set up a job aid, how to set up an e-learning uh, text module, right? How to, how to do a manual, how to, performance support. Yeah, it's even in there, right? But interactive stories, the actual catalyst that will help people engage with all those resources that's not in there. So if you want to learn that piece and you and this actually was helpful to you because you were like, okay, I have all those other pieces. I don't have to reinvent the wheel. I just need a different way, another way to engage people to, you know, really use those things and actually are be sold on using those things. Then interactive stories are like the thing. All right. So if you want to learn more about interactive storytelling, I actually have a two hour masterclass. Yes, it's two hours, but you know, like that's also this, you know, the, the condensed version for you. So that's at elearningsecrets.com. Uh, it's on demand. Now, the other thing that happens is when you sign up there, uh, I'm going to be running a live event in August as I, you know, things calm down a bit and I get, <laughs> I get more organized. And also what's cool is the event in August, it's going to be um, a version of the masterclass that you've got basically on demand right now. But um, what's gonna happen is there's a couple of new projects that my students are releasing that are actually gonna be live. Cause you know, I work with people who are crafting their own interactive stories but a lot of those stories are for internal audiences in an organization. So it's a bummer because you can't share them, right? They can use them in their own portfolios, but that's their thing, right? But, but what's cool is in the next month or so, there'll be two new stories coming out that are fully public. So I'll be uh, sharing not only those examples in that new webinar, but also um, I'll be interviewing those uh, people uh, on my YouTube channel so you guys get to see the process and how they're using the interactive stories for themselves because it's really cool. One of the people is using an interactive story as a lead magnet for cold audiences to drive people to a course, which is awesome, right? It's an emotional intelligence course. And then the other uh, interactive story is also for cold, cold audiences, but the person's using it as um, and both of them are solving great problems, but this person is um, a coach and they want to help people solve this problem on their own. And if they want more help, then that coach is available. So they're, this is how they're using their interactive stories. Of course, I'm gonna share those with you guys because they're awesome. So um, if you have any questions that came up as a result of this, please feel free to add them in the chat. I'd love to hear it. Um, and if there's anything that you're struggling with, um, like as far as like, how do I position this interactive story? How does that work in context? The, uh, it would be great for you to show up to the live event because what happens is I have a ton of examples and case studies and I'll be adding more of course. Uh, but then uh, that's one of the things that usually people struggle with. They're like, okay, I get it here and I've seen it in comic book style. I've seen it in emotional intelligence. I've seen it, but will it work for my specific context, right? So that's what I wanna make sure that is addressed in that webinar. So it'd be great if you showed up live. Otherwise, make sure you watch the one that's on demand right now. It's totally awesome. And uh, if you have any questions, you get a chance to talk to me at the end if you want to. All right, so thanks so much for being here. You guys are awesome. Um, and I hope you have a fabulous rest of the day. And I hope that I gave you some ideas about where you can position your interactive story and if it's a great fit. These are questions that we have in our community every day. So I thought, hey, why don't I bring it up here? Because it's a very important question. Um, and I'll talk to you again about interactive stories and projects tomorrow. All right. So talk to you next time. Bye, friends.